Are you looking to DIY a Cars themed birthday party for your kids? Well, look no further. I just did one for my son Finn when he turned two and I DIY'd so many projects. So today I am sharing with you free files, printables, tutorials, and all the things you'll need to throw a fun Cars themed birthday party. So stay tuned. This is Whiskey and Wet. My name is Whitney and on this channel I love to share DIY and budget home decor content. So if that's something you're interested in, be sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss a future video. Also a huge thank you to Love Every for partnering with me on this video. I will talk more about them in a little bit, but first let's get into the first round of Cars DIYs. I knew from the start that I wanted to create some DIY oil cans, but I wasn't sure how until one day I was eating my lunch and realized that these Progresso soup cans were gonna be perfect. So I ended up removing the label and then designing a ton of these different files in Canva. I will link these down below so you can use them if you would like to. All the information will be over on my blog. I sized them in Google Docs four inches tall by 10 and three quarters inches wide. And then I laminated the top sheet because I printed them just on regular thin printer paper to help protect them. And then I flipped my cans over so they looked like they weren't open. And then I applied the labels with double stick tape. It was super easy. I even was able to make some custom ones that say Finn and two on them. These are all the different businesses within Radiator Springs. They turned out so good and it was a great way to repurpose my soup cans from lunch. I know throwing parties can be stressful, so I wanted to share some of my favorite tips and tricks on top of the DIYs to help you throw parties for your kids on a budget with lower stress. I feel like party decor is one of the biggest stressors for people throwing parties, especially for kids. So the key is to think about items like banners, garlands, things like that, that you can add to the decor you already have. So here I grabbed a sign from Hobby Lobby, this piston cup DIY, which I'll show later. I added things like flags into my plants and little cars toys that we were gonna give Finn anyway. So then everything kind of had its own area. This little garland I actually got on clearance at Michael's. It also had alpacas in it, but I ended up removing that and just stringing up the cacti. I got three garlands for five bucks because it was Christmas clearance. So you wanna think of elements that make you think of the movie, but they don't have to be branded. That's how you're gonna save money. At Dollar Tree, I grabbed some unfinished wood cactuses from the craft section and some play cones from the toy section. I grabbed six cactuses in total, painted three a darker green, three a lighter green, and did dark brown on the bottom of all of them. They were great filler like here on the mantle and behind my little cozy cone motel setup with my cones. This sign I purchased off of Etsy. So if you're interested in that, it was very affordable. It's 3D printed, so cute. And we're planning on using this in Finn's room when we update it from a nursery to a toddler room. I also got this Dynaco sign from the same Etsy seller and I would highly recommend great shipping and they were so cute. Another use for the cones is using double stick tape to add some printouts like I did here. I cut out a Doc Hudson, cut that by hand, as well as a Flo's V8 Cafe. These are just cutouts on a larger Dollar Tree cone with some double-sided tape right in the front, and I just added that to the shelf in my bathroom. This is a quick and easy, affordable way to make it look like you tried really hard, but do it really quickly. I also love to use printables, especially for movies because there's a lot of free things online. I found this file for a Google image search, printed it on my Epson photo printer, stuck it down to this Dollar Tree sign, trimmed it, and it was good to go. This was so cute over a wreath I already had hanging up, and so it was easy, but it was another detail that made the party look pulled together. I will link down below everywhere where I found files so that you can download them as well. This one was really cute and it was from the Facebook page for the Cars movie. Now up until last year, I was very intimidated by a balloon garland, but I'm gonna show you how you can get this picture perfect area really easily. These are my cute grandparents and it turned out great in photos. So the first thing I did was use my balloon pump. It's worth it, you can do it manually, but the pump is on Amazon under 20 bucks. I blew up two balloons and I used the ends to tie it together like a shoelace. Once you have two of those groups, you're gonna twist the centers together to create a quad of four balloons. Then grab some twine or fishing line, my favorite is the fishing line, and I'm gonna take the different color groupings and just start adding them. You're just wrapping around that centerpiece. You wanna be careful so you don't pop your balloons, but you also wanna make sure they're tight enough so they're not gonna fall out. Then when I strung up everything, we were ready to go and I was able to leave that overnight so it's a nice pre-party prepping thing you can do that you don't have to worry about, especially if you're traveling to a party destination. 
This backdrop is from Amazon. I set it up on a little stand that my sister-in-law let me borrow from her wedding. I put some command strips on the wall to help hook up that fishing line. You just hook it over the hook and then it was time to decorate it. So I tried these glue dots from Dollar Tree. They were not my favorite ever. So I would recommend just double stick tape or the name brand glue dots. I went back in with double stick tape because they were driving me nuts and it worked so much better to add some of these other printables. I just printed them out on my printer on some cardstock, double stick taped them right to the balloons and it adds some extra oomph. The number twos are also from Dollar Tree. I finished off the look with these inflatable tires from Amazon and this thing came together quickly and easily, but it was a showstopper for the party and my nephew and Finn loved the tire detail. Another area where you can have fun with decor is a tablescape. This one was also super quick and easy to put together. So I got my tablecloths from Walmart and then I grabbed some black shelf liner from Dollar Tree. I needed one roll per table. I added some masking tape to create some lines down the center for the road that Lightning McQueen makes in Radiator Springs. This is just a quick printable I stuck to a sign I already had and then I filled it out with some cute little characters that we were going to give to Finn anyway for his birthday. Now to personalize the cones, I used some of this vinyl that was sent to me by Hippie Crafter. I love packs like this for parties because there's so many different options for colors. You don't have to buy all the rolls for colors, especially when that's the time that you need them anyway. So I grabbed the matte black out of the pack and I cut out a bunch of these twos in a Cars themed font that I got on Etsy. Again, everything will be linked down below. And I just applied them real quick to the center of my cones and those were for all of my tables. They were pretty simple because I wanted space for people to eat, but they turned out so cute. So it's been well over a year since I have partnered with Love Every here on my channel and Finn absolutely loves their toys. They have a wide variety of options, but what we really love are their play kits. They're specific to certain ages and they've done all of the work. So you just get the box and you know that it's the right toy at the right time for your kids. As a second birthday gift, Finn recently got the companion box and he absolutely could not wait to get the toys out. What I love about it is the durability of the toys and also the booklets that come with the boxes. They explain what the toys are, how to play with them, and different things that you can do. As a first time mom, this is my first rodeo, so learning about the toys and how I can help engage Finn and play with them is huge. I also love that they are all made out of safe materials and so for a kid like Finn who's teething and puts toys in his mouth, this is super nice to have peace of mind. Other Love Every items that Finn plays with every day is the organic cotton play tunnel and he also loves the new organic nap mat that he got. He loves to lay it on the floor and play and be able to lay on the little pillow. It folds up for easy storage and we can put it away at the end of the day. Not only does Finn love these toys, but we have bought this for our niece, cousins, friends. Our family would highly recommend Love Every, so if you've got a little one that you want to get a gift for, head down to the description. I'll have links and more information for you down there. Now let's get back into the DIYs. Now you cannot have a Cars slash Lightning McQueen birthday party without having Rusty's items. So I wanted to create one of these gas cans, but I didn't want to use anything that had gas in it. So I bought a new one from Costco. This was only $16.99, much cheaper than I saw it even on Amazon or Walmart's website. And then I reached again for that vinyl pack from Hippie Crafter. Huge thanks to them for helping me make all of these projects. I grabbed out the colors that I wanted. So I grabbed red and yellow. It looks like ketchup and mustard or McDonald's. Donald's, and I ended up cutting out a layered file that I purchased. It was a Mondo large pack that I got from Etsy with a ton of different files that I used. I put it onto my mat and I ended up cutting it and it cut great. The only thing is I needed to use a little bit less pressure because it has a thinner backing compared to vinyls I've used before, but that is no big deal. You just switch your setting to less pressure and it cut nice and clean for me. Their vinyl is available on Amazon, so I will link it down below so you can check that out as well. So then once I cut out my items and weeded them, it was time to layer them. So I just put some transfer tape over the top of my red Rusty's logo, applied it over the yellow, and then I needed to remove the sticker from my gas can. It also needed some Goo Gone because there was some residue left over. I got rid of any Goo Gone residue and then it was ready to be stuck down. I absolutely love this. It goes really well with the Mack truck that I created, which that tutorial will be coming up in this video. 
I also grabbed these two red canisters on a recent trip to Goodwill because I thought these would also double as great bedroom decor for Finn. I did the same thing, but made it a little bit smaller, the Rusty's logo, and then I also created some of my own stickers to apply to the other one. It really added some extra oomph to this display in our dining room. Now I mentioned DIY stickers and I've got a full video on my channel on how to make these, but here are some ways that you can use DIY stickers for cars themed. So I grabbed some of these automobile bottles of fluid at Dollar Tree just for the sake of it being cheap. I pulled off the decal and then I added my own. So these, you can just Google Disney cars logos and a lot of these will come up. They're either Lightning McQueen sponsors. They are just ones that are been on other cars and everything I was able to find and print out was a Available for free online, which is really great via Google image search. I also created a bunch of stickers to deck out this Dollar Tree toolbox because we knew we were giving Finn cars for his birthday and we knew other people would too. We wanted a container that he could store everything in. So I cut out a bunch of stickers, including this custom one I designed, Finn's racing team, added them to the box, and then you can open the box. He can keep all of his cars in there. And it went really cute with these items that I got from Hobby Lobby. I also use stickers to customize a red, white, and blue planter from Dollar Tree. This Dynaco sticker, again, something you can easily find on Google Images. Applied it to the front. I used that to hold a bunch of stuff. I did a piston cup one that was great for the utensils when we had the food out for lunch. And I also created a larger sticker of Finn's racing team to go on a container for the welcome table. They held the VIP pit passes that I created for the guests. And I also use the stickers on a goodie bag for my nephew for a thanks for coming gift. Now I am a big fan of using cupcakes and creating your own toppers and then using them as decor until you serve them at the party. So these, I just created some circles in Canva, added some of Finn's favorite characters and logos, cut them out, stuck them to some skewers from Amazon, and they went right in the top of these cupcakes. The little flags are also from Amazon, and this was a really fun piece on the table as people came in, and then folks had a great time picking out their favorite characters for which cupcake that they wanted. Super quick and easy, very affordable, and you can customize to whatever you want. Now I mentioned those pit passes before, and those were so easy to make. There's a pack on Amazon where you can get these little plastic, lanyard holders and red lanyards, but they've got a ton of different colors if you don't want red. Then you just pop them in the clear piece, hook on your lanyard, and they're ready to go. I also bought a photo mat off of Amazon, added a sticker to it, as well as this design, Welcome Race Fans, and I asked all of the guests to sign it so we could frame it and put it in Finn's new bedroom. The Piston Cup is so synonymous with the Cars movies, and so I knew I wanted to try to create one for the party decor. So when I was at Dollar Tree, I grabbed an additional one of those little planters for the top of it, and for the bottom, I used a dog bowl, also from Dollar Tree. Then the other piece that I needed was some heavy chipboard, as well as my knife blade for my Cricut. Now you could cut this out with cardboard, but this just helped me so that I knew like I was going to get a shape that I wanted. So I searched Piston Cup and found this design in Cricut. I removed all of the layers I didn't need, and then I also used shapes to slice out the different pieces of the Piston Cup that I needed. So I was gonna need two wings, as well as this kind of Eiffel Tower looking piece at the bottom. If you're new to Cricut and you want more info on Slice, I will link a video down below that will go a lot slower and run you through it. Now to cut the heavy chipboard, it is a lot easier than I even thought. You just need a strong grip mat, which is denoted by the fact that it's purple here. It also says strong up in the corner. You hook your chipboard down with some masking tape or painter's tape, and then you're going to slide your white guides all the way to the side. Then you load it up, make sure that your right blade is in there, it'll run you through calibration, and then you cut. It will take a little bit of time, mine needed to do like 20 passes to cut it out, but it saved me so much time, everything was uniform, and I cut out two of the bottoms so that I could super glue them together and have them be extra sturdy to hold the cup up. Then to assemble, I used a mix of super glue and hot glue. I gave myself a little wood piece at the bottom of the planter just from a little like popsicle stick so that I had something more stable to glue to than the plastic. Then I'm adding super glue and then some hot glue to hold it in place while the super glue sets. 
Once my whole thing was assembled, I didn't hook it to the bottom yet because I had to spray paint this gold. I started with this metallic gold that I had in my stash. I ended up doing more of a deeper gold color. So whatever gold you have will work. And then I also did a coat of flat black spray paint on the bottom to get rid of some of the shine from the dog bowl. Then when they were both dry, I used a ton of hot glue to get it to stay on the bottom. I added it around the bottom, like outside, kind of like if you were to solder it on essentially. And then to cover that hot glue and make it look a little bit better, I just took a paintbrush and some black chalk paint, covered it up and it blends right in. You can't even tell unless you're looking super close and it's a kid's birthday, so I wasn't concerned. Then the final piece was to cut out piston cup as well as some lines on my Cricut. You could also hand draw this on there if you don't have a Cricut, but I chose to hand position everything. I was just worried that my spray paint on plastic would potentially peel up and I didn't want that. And there you have it. It turned out so good. This is gonna be a great piece in Finn's new bedroom. And it was a great addition to the mantle decor when people walked in the party. So I looked high and low for a tutorial on how to make these cardboard Mack truck figures. They were awesome. A lot of people use them with tables to look like a big semi, but I could not find a tutorial. So I decided to take a bunch of pictures, work my way through it, and then share my process with you guys. So my adventure started off in the moving aisle of Home Depot. I ended up picking up a large and extra large moving box. The large box was about two bucks and the extra large was about three bucks. So under $5 for the base of your truck. I also grabbed a roll of this contractor grade masking tape to help me put everything together. Once I got home, my first step was to tape the edges of the extra large box so it would stand up as tall as I wanted it. Then I folded the front tab back in just a little bit so that it had a angle and you'll see why in a second. I trimmed off the two triangles that I marked there and then used some more masking tape to hook it together. The masking tape is kind of like my glue to help me mold everything to where I want it. Then you're gonna want some extra cardboard on hand. I was saving boxes for a while. I was gonna use what I had, which you could easily do instead of buying the ones at Home Depot, but I wanted to give you guys a standard size in case you wanted to make it just like mine. Once that top part was closed off and taped, then I taped the top part of the large box together and then cut a curve on either side of the bottom flap here, and that's gonna be the mouth of Mac. My last step for this part of the truck was to take an extra piece of cardboard, cut it to size, cut a little bit of a bill, and this is going to be Max hat bill. I was having an issue with the hat kind of staying outward, so I just took two little kind of kickstand pieces essentially. I just wung it so I didn't like measure, I just kind of made it so it would stay up. And then once that one worked, I cut a second one for the other side. You just want something that's gonna help the bill of that hat stay up. Then it was time to make the 3D wheel wells. So I started by using some extra cardboard and kind of just freehanding what I thought that would look like. It was just kind of a large elongated U shape essentially. Once that was cut out then I needed to use my masking tape and some strips of cardboard to make it 3D. So you want this to pop out from the truck. Take your masking tape and kind of curve the cardboard. You might have to fold it a little bit to get it to be a little bit more pliable but then go around and stick it down, adding pieces as needed until the entire outside is covered. So you kind of have, you know, something that will jet out of your truck. I cut the edge to make sure that it was straight to fit on, and then I hooked it to my truck with some masking tape. So the build phase is complete, and here is what my truck looked like. Then I took it outside and covered some of the areas with paper mache. To do that, I just needed some Elmer's glue and water as well as some newspaper. I covered a lot of the seams here as well as any of the corrugated pieces that were open on the end. This is just me being really detail oriented and wanting to see what it looked like to share with you guys. Tonight I am watching a show and painting this over the paper mache. Some of it's falling off, but over here, the goal is to get even coverage and between the seams and the regular cardboard, the only thing that's really been helping me prime is the chalk paint.
after I applied my one coat of primer, which was white, and then two coats of red acrylic paint, here's what it looked like, and then it was time for accessories. I used a coffee mug to cut out two circles from some extra cardboard. I painted the back a metallic silver and the front a yellow for headlights, and I used some hot glue to hook them onto either side of my little wheel wells. Then I cut a piece and painted it chrome that would fit on the front of Mac. Now you don't need this little overlap piece, but I liked it. So depending on what kind of cardboard you have, you might just have the front grill, but I used the hot glue to attach it. And I'm using my new Ryobi cordless hot glue gun. I absolutely love this thing. Alex got it for me for Christmas and it helped so much. Like here I'm attaching the side mirrors, which I also cut out of cardboard and painted with that metallic paint. And then I also cut out with a large bowl from my kitchen some wheels and painted those black out of cardboard. To make Max eyes, I used some cardstock and just cut two mirrored images of kind of a curve. I was looking at the pictures online of Mac to make it happen, stuck it on with double sided tape. For the exhaust pipes in the back, I used two Dollar Tree pool noodles. I just wrapped them in some foil and I was able to hook down the foil with some packing tape. When those were all wrapped, I just stuck them to my truck with some more hot glue. Then at this point, it was just bringing home all of the details. So I took first a pencil and a ruler to draw out a big rectangle as well as lines across the center to create the grill detail. I'm just using a thick Sharpie marker. And then I hand drew on the Mac M-A-C-K and I did a pencil first so I knew where I wanted it. I found these eyes and a mouth online and I sized them so that if you print them out on regular paper, they'll be the right size. So that'll be linked for you over on my blog if you want to make this. Again, I'm sticking those on with double stick tape. This video basically is sponsored by double stick tape. It's not, but it feels like it is. Then I cut out a ton of different logos. Again, I found on Google Images and used that double sided tape again. Stick on the Rusties on the hat, the 95 some Lightning McQueen images, and it was ready to go. I absolutely love how this turned out. I'm really proud of it. Everybody loved it at the party. Finn was so excited to see it, which made me so happy. He was just like radiating joy that whole day, which was awesome. To finish off the truck look, I just took a red tablecloth. I put it over a table that we already had in our front room, and then I added just a sticker with the Rusty's logo that I had cut out, and it was ready to go. I hope this tutorial will help you put together your own truck if you're in a situation like me where you can't find a tutorial but you want to put one together for a party. If you do, be sure to tag me because I would love to see your creations as well. Thanks again for watching. Be sure to let me know if you are planning a Cars themed party for your little kiddo and also be sure to head down to the description for more information on Love Every. A huge thank you to them for supporting Whiskey Hi. and Wit. Yeah? Should we say thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Can you wave? Bye!